Welcome to the Get Offset Podcast. My name is Emily. My name is Andrew. And that's it. Yep, that, that's the end of the episode. We're done. <laughs> thanks for thanks I don't want to do this way. <laughs> I don't want to. You're scared. I'm scared. You coward. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll talk about uh, other scurdy cats right now. I oh, Just really quickly, I've realized that like I feel like the most cutting insult you could ever say to a, a man is to call him a coward. Um, I no, I think it's such a strong word. It's a very strong word, and that's why I think it's so funny to me. You know, I think I'd like to one up that, and I think calling a man flaccid takes that to a whole new level. That's gross. That that gets it through a grossness, a, a, a dickery of words. Uh, that hits, mind cuts. That's my- so many like men's insecurity is like, like that cuts. That does cut, but I think what will actually hurt you uh, longer emotionally is being called a coward because it's that's not like like something teasing like a scaredy cat or saying your skirt or something like that calling someone a coward is a a harsh a harsh one i don't know i could live with that if you're okay no i won't i won't go there but can you imagine someone you love dearly looking at you and saying are you a coward or you're a coward I don't know. And then I would say, no, I'm not. Fight me. Fight Come me. On, man. Fight me. Fight me. Yeah. I mean, Come no, at me. No, no, don't actually fight me. Oh, my God. No, you're going <laughs> to fight me. No, no, I didn't mean it. No, I'm sorry. Please don't hurt me. I'm a coward. I meant it. Yeah, a little scaredy cats. Like, we were talking, like, that's where you were going with that one. So, speaking of scaredy cats, um, I think there's a new alpha in my household, and I'm very intrigued by this. Is it Poppy? Kind of, I think. I think Poppy's taking over Alpha. <laughs> uh, so Poppy is like my little eight pound orange and white kitty. She's adorable. And then we've got Percy, who's like a 20 pound cat. Like Chonk. <laughs> he's huge. Yeah. So he's also a sweetheart. And, uh, you know, I think Poppy's, they've been doing a lot of playing, but I'm noticing that Poppy's doing a lot of the chasing and Percy's doing the, quick run into the bed and hide oh like, percy get it out of the way. and i'm like is poppy just like quick enough to harass the big beastie and it I'm seems like that it, way it seems like that's how it's going it's really strange because yeah that's never been a thing with percy's always been the big baddie the big so baddie kind of, i like it this is a strange turn of events so uh we'll see how this plays out mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued and i'm also kind of um I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah, I'm intrigued. You're intrigued. Just, there's the only word for it. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, I think I might be Team Poppy. I think the young, the little ones are scrappy, and you know they got a lot more to fight for. The underdog, the dark horse. We don't have that problem in my house, though. Well, more, more of like the, more of the orange horse. The orange horse. Orange yeah. is a great color. For the record, orange is going to be the color of the year, you know, 2020. <laughs> Specifically, the guitar world, like Skr Pantone, like of the guitar world, that's what matters. I predict white Fend- white guitar with black pickguard being the combo of the year. I don't know. I, Fender just put orange back in their lineup, and I'm very hyped for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I think I sent you that. I mean, they didn't. You did send it. I mean, they didn't just do it. They they've also been doing it on their Duo Sonics last few years, but. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I want to see more of it. Let's see more orange. Sure. Um, Plus, reverb.com is orange. That's pretty exciting. It is. I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that uh, I got one of those reverb.com mugs, and it's kind of starting to peel. The guitar peeled off. The other instruments are still there for now, but the guitar peeled off. Mm. Yeah, so sad. Yeah. How are your kitties doing? My kitty, singular. She's my princess. And I realized I hadn't been taking enough videos of her. So the other day I was trying to get one of her responding to Kiri want a cookie. Uh, and she, I asked her a couple of times and she looks up. She opens her mouth as if to me out and just goes, <sighs> did you hear that on the microphone? <laughs> Yeah. And it was just about the most pitiful thing I'd ever seen in my life. But now she's just my buddy. Like I'll go downstairs to work in the morning and she'll just sit on her little uh, 
purple cat mattress and just like uh, chill with me, poke her head out the curtain a couple times, meow at me and get some snacks. And it's, it's really made working from home bearable. Well, that's good. Yeah, she's a good Working girl. from home sounds like such a drag. Ugh. Why would you want to do that? Mm, I don't know, man. I really miss being rushed every morning and getting less sleep. Yep, that sounds miserable. Yeah, that was great. Those were the days. Oh, taking the bus? Mm, those were the days. <laughs> taking the bus. Taking the bus. Uh, yeah. I drive to work. I'm, I'm so fancy. You're so fancy. Uh, yeah, and you drove to my house the other day with uh, your lovely lady love. I did, yeah. It was a uh, take your spouse to work day. Apparently. Oh, really? So I got um, unofficially. So, uh, yeah, no, my wife uh, does landscape and interior design, and uh, that also includes the implementation of said designs. And so we were doing some landscaping. I got dragged out for that on a Saturday. It was actually... Uh, it was really great to do work with her. Uh, as far as the work itself, good gravy. I don't know how she does it. I am not cut out for working in the outdoors in the heat, direct sunlight, like the sun. She's strong. Okay. Where's the, where's the air conditioning? You're I mean, weak. <laughs> I, 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 as long as you don't call me a coward, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> oh my God. I like you say that you say it wouldn't hurt you, but I've definitely like been in some joking situations with male friends and I've called them a coward and it just, it takes them a couple seconds to realize that I'm just joking. <laughs> They're like, what? And that's why I don't do it anymore. Cause it's too effective. It's a really mean thing to say. I'll stop. It is awfully harsh. It's pretty hard. That's why I don't do it to people. Well, you should do it more. I think the world needs more humility. Mm-hmm. Tell me I'm wrong. More humility, less entitlement. Indeed. That's pretty much the, the best way to sum mm-hmm. up last week's episode. Yeah, but you guys got to see my garden after uh, tearing up. I did, Gardens. yeah. Yeah. It reminds you, I need to figure out what I'm going to cook with that broccoli for dinner tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hope it's tasty. Yeah. Emily was kind. She gave us broccoli and jalapenos. I did. I have so many jalapenos. I'm like shocked. There's like 20 growing in one, just one plant. Like what What are you going to do with all of those? I'm just going to eat them whole. That sounds frightening. Why would you do that? As I can take the heat. I don't know if I can. You don't know if you can? Well, do you want to have a... I don't know if I can. <laughs> do you have an on-air jalapeno eating competition? I, you know, it's not going to be a competition, more of a... Uh, this is where this is the part of the show where you you say if you don't eat the jalapeno <laughs> you're you're a say let's finish the sentence coward ah coward <laughs> no so I, I I in fact um I am in the comforts of my own home my own home and I have a glass of water next to me and there's milk in the fridge nearby <laughs> should I need the backup mm-hmm. uh, and I'm holding a jalapeno from Emily's garden. Me too. And I'm contemplating whether or not I should eat this thing whole. I, I, I think you should, but I think we need to have rules about it. What? Oh, shit. okay. What are the rules? <laughs> the rules are here we you go. Can... This just got real. <laughs> <laughs> you can, when you're eating the jalapeno, you can do the crunch into the microphone, but then you got to get your mouth way the hell away from the microphone while you're <laughs> chewing. Them's the rules. You don't want chewing noises on the microphone? I will mute them. <laughs> Should we have like a trigger warning, like a caution, like tri- no? Because we you don't like no, che- because we don't like. Actually, that's not a bad one. If you're really put off by chewing sounds, which I know is a real thing, I'm going to take them out for you because I'm not a monster. I am. Don't make me edit that out. Oh my god! <laughs> it's only fair. You make right. me eat a jalapeno. Yes, and you can have your beverage. Your wa- your water is not going to help you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> should i should i be going to pour milk right now uh you're about to eat a, you a fresh jalapeno which is not something i even do so i'm gonna do it with you though are we ready <sighs> jeez all right are you scared coward i won't back down all right no i won't back all right down. do you want me to go first uh no at the same all time right. that's that's so much three easier. two one shoot 
Wait, now? Three, are we going to do a three, two, one crunch? Three, two, one crunch. I yes. like that. Or three, two, one. Yeah, three, two, one crunch. All right. Three. Two. One. Ow, my eyes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Did you get some jalapeno juice? Ow, my. No. Ow, my eyes. What happened, Andrew? <laughs> It squirted it in my eye. Oh no! I can't make this up. Oh bummer. <laughs> I should not be doing this on such an empty stomach. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hang on, I need to go rinse out my eyes. Okay. Oh my god. Ow! <laughs> Listeners, I killed him. I killed my little buddy. Ah, oh, Get Offset is sponsored by Jennings Guitars. Made America by Chad Jennings. Andrew's getting one. He's very excited. Um... They're made in California. They have several models. The Voyager Deluxe is an offset. Uh, I think it's kind of. I think it's a, more like a thin line situation. There's an F hole. I don't. It's not. I don't even think. It, I don't think it's technically a semi hollow. I should ask Chad. But he does. A, he has this really neat form where you say all the things that you want in a guitar, and it prices it out, and then he's really fast. So it's pretty neat. I'm not very pleased with my jalapenos. They don't have a lot of flavor nor heat. I'm back. I did the Chad Jennings sponsorship spot. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I survived. Um, it it it. Uh, if it hadn't been my eye, I think it would have been fine. That wasn't actually that spicy. I was expecting way worse. No, um, I didn't like stress out the plants. I kind of kept them watered. So next year, I'm going to stress them by not watering them for a while is that how they get spicy that's one way these yeah. aren't this isn't spicy at all kind of that actually kind of had a nice flavor yeah well i'm not gonna keep eating that because that's not a challenge i'll put it in, i'll put no. it in my really spicy stew that rick made me for dinner uh for lunch tomorrow but you didn't bite the entire thing at once is that what you did <laughs> yeah, I thought that was the point. I like all the way up to the stem. <laughs> it's just a lot of one thing to put in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> I told you I wasn't a coward. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I, I, let me take a like You I, wear hubris. Oh my god. It's just a, they weren't they're not small jalapenos. They weren't. Uh, that was a lot. <laughs> oh, that's just too much of a thing to have in your mouth. Well, I did it. Oh, God. I just sent it to you. Oh, jeez. That was up to the step. That was a lot to chew oh, on. Oh, my God. And also I have to have squirted him into a my sweet eye. Sweet gravy. I took like a little bite <laughs> at a time. Otherwise, I would have been chewing oh. on that jalapeno for 20 minutes. <laughs> I did it. You did it. I'm sorry that it got in your eyeball. That's f***ing gross. No, it's fine. It, it's kind of over it now. It wasn't that strong. It's not like I just got pepper spray. Oh, my God. Live on the air. <laughs> All right. I think, you know, that's, we'll have to do that next. Is we'll have to do a video where I, like, I get pepper sprayed and then I have to put together a pepper oh, board. I think that's. I think that is how we profit. <laughs> and I am here for it. I... <laughs> oh, you're serious. No. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah no this isn't jackass this is get offset it's a it's 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 a dirtier joke but it's a different thing <laughs> hey do you get the picture by the way yes oh my god why you did you say lying. that right after I mentioned a dirty joke <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> I wasn't thinking of it. I'm so innocent. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking about he that. Did, okay. It really was a picture of a pepper. Yes. Confirmed. <laughs> yes, it was a picture. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. Well, once on Twitter and I saw like some gardening thing I follow, their picture was like marked as like explicit content. <laughs> So I'm like, what? And I click on it to show it. It's just a bunch of carrots. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just like a okay. box of carrots because the post was about like gardening. <laughs> but it got flagged automatically <laughs> by Twitter. Well, I can't blame like, them. No, keep things pure. <laughs> oh my God. Hmm. Uh, do you want to do the Spruce Effects sponsor? Uh, sure, I'll do the Spruce Effects. <laughs> the Spruce Effects sponsorship. Uh, sponsor and friend of the show, Spruce Effects. Oh. They make the official Mount Hood Fuzz Boost mm-hmm. pedal, which is the uh, Spruce Effects and Get Offset collaboration, thereby making it the official Get Offset mm-hmm, pedal. Mm-hmm. You can pick up yours now for two hundred dollars with the code get offset at checkout on the Spruce Effects website. For more information, please visit spruceeffects.com. That's spruceeffects.com. Uh one oh three point three. So uh as we were recording this, I also asked our East Coast listenership where where it is one twenty three in the morning. <laughs> uh what they thought we should talk about having an idea in mind uh that we came up with at the beginning of the podcast um do we want to to tackle jason's question slash topic idea now or do we want to wait until later you know so i i'm torn because on one hand i've spent this entire episode prov- trying to prove that i'm not a coward and then now i have a chance to bow out of getting roasted um what just for opening up and being vulnerable. And the other hand is the topic does sound really interesting. And I think I have like kind of brought it up as well. Um, as I, I think as much as I want to do Jason's topic, I want to let's do it next yes. week. I want to do some reading. Into yes, this. I agree. Um, I think it's a great option and I don't want to share what it yeah. is. We're just going to leave listeners on the, uh, we're going to, we on should the edge of their seat. It, after this, we need to message Jason. Maybe we should. Maybe now we should message Jason. And be like, delete those comments <laughs> if he can. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Jeez. Delete your comments. We'll explain later. <laughs> All right. So um, we weren't. We weren't rolling when this beautiful conversation was happening between the, the two of us, uh, Andrew, but basically we weren't. Thank goodness. That was, that was funny. Uh, but horrifying. like, uh, yeah, so that was fun. So we kind of came up with something that's vaguely in that vein. Uh, and that's what we kind of mm-hmm. talked about before. So I feel like that's what we kind of built the episode up to is something a little bit more fun, more lighthearted. We we came off of a pretty heavy, well, not like a super heavy, but heavy-ish kind of topic that, you know, I don't know. You, you Maybe you took it personally or I don't want to make presumptions. What should I say? Well, you know, I'll just, I'll make, I'll make it less we'll just make heavy. It less heavy. And I'll just, I just want to say. I'll quote John Mulaney. Mm, yes. Great comedian. And in terms of like whether or not you should like keep follow up with plans to uh, to meet your guests or your your fans or whatever after the show, uh, to quote John Mulaney, canceling plans is like heroin. Go on. No, that, 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 that's oh, OK, I get it. It, it. it just it's funny because if you have ever canceled plans and then just sat home and not gone to them, it's. If you're an introvert, it feels great. Now I'm an extrovert. I don't know what that's like. I cancel plans like, oh man. But mm-hmm. I, I wanted to take a moment and dip my, my feet into the world of introverts and pretend like I was one of okay. you. Are you an introvert? Yes. I think I may be an amnivert. Because <laughs> there are times where I really thrive yeah. off of like groups of people. In the end, I feel like I'm better one-on-one. And on the most hand, 
I get really tired by people. It makes me really tired to be around a lot of people. I don't like staying at parties for very long. Oh, I'm like the first one to show up to a party and then like I help clean up after it. No, I just want to and like, then, like crash on someone's couch and yeah, you don't invite me up to a party unless you like want me to also yeah, like it just I don't I won't There really... there are definitely times where I will just leave. I will just leave. I'm so sorry. I know it's not the most polite thing to do in the world, but sometimes you just got to go home. Yeah, and I'm the person who's like, how can we uh how can we ramp things up quite a bit? Yes. But, you know. Yes. Um so what's I'm so sorry. I'm a little lost. What what's happening? Oh, anyway, so we we were just saying that we're going to have a bit more of a lighthearted episode depending on your point of view. So I'm a little worried about how this is going to go down, but yeah. we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. So fun. like Andrew, I feel like since you had to miss a couple episodes, like maybe the audience is a little bit behind in getting to know you as a human. Yeah. <sighs> Self revelation. What a frightening thing. Mhm. So where do, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Do you want to ask the questions or? I mean. See, see, because we started talking we, about We did start Rush talking about Rush. And then after the episode. You roasted after, me for But after the episode, Rush. you're like, did someone from Rush do something bad? I'm like, no, they just suck. <laughs> but they oh, don't. Oh, God, they're so bad. They're so bad. This is not good music. I There's so disagree. much of it. How is there um, so much of it? Because it's a prolific discography. No, that's, that's not even like they tried doing an album. They wrote an album that was so difficult they couldn't even play it in the studio and they gave up on it. Like they're that prolific in the terms of songwriting. No, and Andrew, that means they songs. suck. They're so bad that they can't even play the music that they wrote. You can't tell me that they like suck at their instruments. I think that they're honestly. way overrated. Uh... There's, There's no, no winning. winning. You should know. You should know this by yeah. now. I think anyone who's reasonable and objective who's listening to this should agree with me. <laughs> I th- and that, that's just the end of that part of the conversation. <clears throat> but uh, anyways, in the process of this conversation, I've also discovered that you pretty much hate all the music that I like. <laughs> and I'm more or less indifferent to most You can of the music do it as either I hate the music or I just really like razzing people or that I just really like saying like like being the absurdist, I guess. Like you can take a couple of perspectives. I just think it's hilarious. It's pretty entertaining to me when someone like just they just have this kind of conversation. I have it with my friends. Like this is how my my best friend in high school and I would just like. Did you hear that? Hear what? <laughs> did you make a weird noise on the microphone, or is there something weird in this room that I am in? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just I was taking a play out of Getty Lee's playbook and uh, was moving the microphone with my nose. Do you know what that sounded like? <laughs> it sounded like something from my left was going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was my nose on my windscreen. I'm glad you hate that jalapeno. <laughs> Because you deserve that for this. <laughs> that was not great. That was really scary. Do you know how many serial killers are from Seattle? <laughs> Do you know how much? Oh, a lot of them, actually. The rest of them are Do from you know... Tacoma. Do you know how much true crime I watch? <laughs> More than you should. Look up to your health. You're really paranoid. All oh, I did was God. touch my microphone with my nose, and you're like, oh. you're, you're about to. Di- I'm so. S- I don't think this records in stereo, but I wish it did because oh, no one's gonna understand how scary that was. I'm now. I don't feel bad at all. Yeah, you know what? Go back and listen to that part, but only with your yeah. left ear. Oh God! <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry, that, that got me going, dude. Um. Poetic justice. You know what? No, now it's just going to make me go harder on you. Grunge isn't a thing, Um, Andrew. (laughs) Grunge is a thing. No, it's not. Define what are the characteristics of grunge? Grunge is a late 80s, early 90s genre 
it hasn't really continued on, but it was a subculture of punk. And there's a handful of bands that I think fit into it really well. And you just have to look back. I think basically you've got the punk rock, just punk rock, not grunge. What makes it grunge though? What makes the, the, what makes the Melvins or the Buzzcocks or Nirvana's like punk rock different than like just other punk rock. You have to be able to define the characteristics of it. Otherwise it can't be a definition. It's just like, the only thing these bands had in common was where they were geographically. That's it. I mean, that that is a big part it's, of it. It's, Let's it's be fair. it. Seattle it's it. I know that you say Alice in Chains isn't grunge. I don't think they're grunge because I don't think grunge is a thing, but they're clearly a metal band. Yeah. Like Nirvana, clearly a punk band. Like what makes their like pop punk different than anything else is it like uh something in the lyrics because not really they're not pop punk, oh my though. god in bloom was made to be a sing-along song it's just punk rock pop punk pop in a minor key well, okay but in all fair, pop but pop punk has become its own th- entirely own genre it's shortly it's, it's, thereafter it's punk that, rock so. that is uh the like digestible by uh popular culture and standards like the ramones Nope. We're kind of like a boppy pop, pop punk. You can look at the Sex Pistols. That was pop punk because it was sing songy punk rock. That you know the. I wanna be sedated. That's the Ramones. Very good. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying things that I, I feel like about how I feel about this conversation already. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't like it. Okay, but you. But you, seriously, you need to be able to like describe what sonically category or like lyrically or whatever categorizes a group of people other than that they were from of the same place and wore flannel i don't know how to describe it i just know there's a specific sound when i listen to it i think that is grunge <sighs> just now i'm sorry it's I, just, we've... like like okay so what what sound garden is that a grunge band absolutely what makes it grunge I, it's like they're a rock band. They're a hard rock band. And they're so different than the Buzzcocks. They are very different. They, they definitely, they push the boundary. But how, so how can they both, but how can they both be the same? How can they both be in the same genre if they are so, so different? Moving on. I, I, I we're going to have to agree to disagree on this. Grunge exists. That's not agreeing to disagree when then you say your thesis as if it is the thing like it doesn't (laughs) (sighs) this is this is for the record this is how different we are as people this is very strange this is yes this is really funny i'm so sorry this is just fun like sorry uh i'm not gonna apologize for having fun you don't have to apologize for it but Aw, does it make you sad? You sound really down. I don't want you to feel down. So here's the thing, though. Like, we 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 sh- we should have started with something else. But grunge is like the reason why a huge part of the reason why I got into music is my dad. Yeah, my dad is on the younger side of things. Um, I won't say how young, but I will say he was in high school in the late '80s, early '90s, and so he grew up in like the San Francisco area listening to grunge. He was around for that to happen. It was, um. And so that's a lot of what he listened to. And so when I was a kid, that's what I was being fed was a whole lot of that era of music. And some of it was grunge and some of it wasn't. But we're talking Tool, Alice in Chains, um, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Yeah. You didn't listen to that as a kid? Tool? I'm sorry. You think that Tool – I don't think Tool's grunge. No, I said grunge and other things. Specifically like this era of like rock and all of the related genres. Uh, I mean, I did too. I had an older brother who listened to all that stuff. My mom liked a lot of that Lollapalooza stuff. um, Temple of the Dog and Audio Slave and, I mean, good gravy. So that's like a lot of what I listened to. And so there's a whole lot there. So you you just went and went right for the heart of a lot of the music that I dig. Like, geez. Well, I'm not saying it's bad. Do you hear me say Nirvana sucks? No, but you're saying that. Grunge- I'm just saying that. I, I'm just saying that. Like, 
I, I think it, I think that the bands would say it was a like a garbage genre title because they would say that they didn't sound you know the same like it's not like you can take western swing and listen to you know bob wills and then listen to asleep at the wheel and be like yes these are both the same genre i'm just saying that like just because it was like a time period and let's be real like it was mostly about like the fashion grunge like that's really what tied all of that stuff together uh sure. like i'm not saying I mean, that's that, not that's, that, that's, but, that's like, part of just the area of mtv but so no like but like i just don't think that is it does the bands any justice to like try to mash them all together just like the really all they had in common like they knew the same people because they were in the same scene in the same city and like uh, gosh that's that's pretty much it. Like they wore the same kind of stuff. They well, came from the we same place. We will start a poll when this episode comes out, and we'll see what er, everybody else thinks. Because I'm just doing okay. A job I don't want to. I, I don't want to make you feel sad. I'm just don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I'm just. All right. So I, here's where I've had here's this where conversation punch back. a lot of times. Punch back. Nirvana is not pop punk in any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to stand by that. Pop punk is a completely different genre. Popular punk is, it's like radio friendly punk. We're talking Good Charlotte, Blink 182, All Time Low, Early Panic of the Disco. What? Okay. Uh, yeah. That I'll, is, that I'll, is concede, pop I'll concede that's pop yellow punk. Card. I'll concede that's pop punk. Ew, what? Don't hate Yellow Card, you know. They have a violin. And? They're emo. Okay, the Yellow Card definitely falls into the category of like emo, Midwestern emo kind of stuff. But I, I, I lump them into pop punk because there's definitely those influences there. But, but like if you didn't like if you didn't if you heard unreleased stuff by any of those bands with like the vocals removed or whatever, you'd have trouble telling them apart. Ouch. No, I'm saying like I'm not like I'm just saying that like it's the same for again like Western swing. Like it's kind of hard from the outside without a lot of internal experience to be like, oh, that's, you know, that band, that's that band. Like, that's kind of what, I, like, you would never, like, hear Soundgarden on the radio and then hear Nirvana musically and think they were, the like, anywhere near the same band. I don't know. I feel like uh, if we're talking, like, Nirvana's first album, um, you, like, put that up against, like, Spoon Man. Like, so Bleach I'm talking about, Spoon Man. Okay, you're talking about Bleach. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Their first record. Come on now. Uh, oh, God. Sorry. Which was recorded for like was like 800 bucks or something like that one day in a studio they just did track after track after track just knocked them all out yeah it sounds like that's what they did yikes it what? sounds it's, it's what, one of the it's greatest, what they did it's one of the Why greatest wouldn't... albums of that era uh it sounds i think it sounds i think the production was great on it but and what it was recorded in like a day why can't i say it sounds like it because <laughs> it sounds like you're dissing it <laughs> It's like when someone says, I'm so tired, and then they say, yeah, you look tired. Yep. So. <laughs> I've gotten I, that response. I'm not No, anyway, so if one. you put Bleach up against, like, Spoon Man, I think we've got some relative, like, not they're not the same, obviously. They've got their own distinct sounds, but they're not so far off that you put them in completely different genres. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. And, like, but to also take Bleach, which is so different. Oh, gosh. This is maybe, like, one of the most, like, if you don't give a shit about grunge, you're like, ugh, right now. Um, yeah, but I, I, like, I don't want you to feel bad. That's the thing. I just, like, that's my position is that I don't think it was, like. I think it was Nirvana's best album. Enough. Bleach? No. Yeah, absolutely. Ugh. Okay, well, if that's the Nirvana you like, that's very different than, like. Never mind. No, Nirvana. In your because I think, but they it wasn't it wasn't even called grunge then. Well, no, and no one called it at that point. But the, uh, but and then but the name came from like the later albums. So I feel like that's what you need to like. I, I think they were just trying to put a label together for what the scene was. I mean, I agree with that. But there was a scene. There was a sound. There was a an attitude. An attitude was a, a big part of that. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. So. I think it, grunge is a flash in the pan that's being uh, that's being kept alive by groups like Deer Tick right now. I'm not sure we're going to see another grunge quite the same way ever again. 
So the cow punk band deer tick. Like let's all go to the bar. That that deer tick. No. What am I thinking, am I thinking of? of it? Okay, now we're like, are we thinking about this the right band? Now I'm second guessing myself. Good gravy. Well, I always actually th- this says here that they're considered alt alt rock, but I've always put them more in like the uh, Americana thing. But they're kind of like Titus Andronicus and stuff like that. But I feel like Twang Gear. Well, anyways. Oh, that was awkward. Moving forward. Uh, so pop punk is great. And I think pop punk does a great job of taking the good stuff from the formulaicness of pop and taking that into its own genre and its own sound. And I, that's one of my favorite sounds, honestly. All right. So I, I like how that went. Um, Foo Fighters was great for the first few records. And then I don't know what's happened to them since. Could, well, like, Dave Grohl uh, stopped doing every single thing. <laughs> yeah, he recorded. I mean, he recorded those first albums like Prince, and then started bringing the band in. Right, Color and the Sound is one of my favorite records ever. Um, That's good. It's a good record. Let's be honest. I'm, I didn't say it wasn't. So, all right. What else do you want to razz me about? What else do you want to know? Oh, I don't want. Oh, now you're making me sound like the bad guy. <laughs> this is a get to know your podcast co-host episode so so like what do you want people to know about you i know like probably some of the things they want to know like Like what do you want i don't know man like oh just what do you want people to know about yourself don't make (laughs) i mean ask questions it's very late i'm putting you on the spot i'm doing it i'm holding my foot oh god don't make me uh Because, like, so you talked about, like, like in Neil Peart, you made me feel bad because you went all, like, it's part of who I am with grunge. What else? (laughs) That was a good touch, wasn't it? (laughs) That was, God, you're just appealing to my, like, (laughs) you didn't mean it. That was just your defense tactic. It worked. <laughs> I felt bad. Moving forward. It, none of it was untrue. Yeah. No, but like, yeah, I can still disagree with that and that's fine. But I just enjoy razzing people. I like to, to he, I can take it pretty well too. Um, so I think that's one of the way, reasons I like doing it. But it's also a really nice way to like, kill time when you're bored and don't dip before you had like cell phones with everything on them. Like if mm-hmm. I were, if I were like waiting in line for like a show or something and there were some dudes about our age, like Michelle and I would razz them about this kind of stuff and we'd razz each other. So that's just, it's, it's maybe one of the more confusing things about me. My love language is very much to like tease people. But like That's respectfully, I think I'm not going to call you bad names. I'm not going to say you suck for like liking a band or whatever, but I will like make you think about why you like these things. Like when you talk about Neil Peart being like one of the top five drummers, I'm like, you, you can name five jazz drummers better than Neil Peart. Uh, I'd rather listen to Karen Carpenter drum. Well, just because you'd rather listen to it doesn't mean that they're better. I would, let's okay. Let's go with drummers. John Bonham. What? Oh, absolutely. Are no. you kidding me? Yes. Don't you're are you going to say Keith Moon next? That was a couple down the line. What? Um. No, you're not serious. You're not uh, serious. Okay, so you're not we, serious we, about Keith Moon. No way. <laughs> All right, well, we'll save that for another episode, but I was kind of. What? Uh, so, what, what, after that Ringo star? No, God, no. That, that, no. I am embarrassed on behalf of all, like. <sighs> I would believe you if you said, I would believe you if you said Phil Collins. Over I have Neil a Perry. lot of respect for what Ringo Starr did, but as a drummer, I never connected and felt inspired by anything that he did. Who? Ringo Starr. Oh. 
I just I just never connected with him as a drummer, honestly. So Charlie Watts had take over Neil Peart. I would take Buddy Rich. A uh, duh. Clyde, Clyde Stubblefield. And I'll take Louis Belson for the double kick drum. Who is he with? Louis Belson. How have you never heard of Louis Belson? Louis Belson was one of the original pioneers of having two bass drums in jazz. And that brought a whole lot. Obviously, like that just sets the groundwork for other folks doing the same thing. So I, I mean that some of what he was able to do with the, the four limb coordination with all it just some of the bits I've listened to have just been insane. Mm. And then I would say follow up with Gene Krupa, but those Wait, would be my hey. three. Ja- <laughs> well, I thought that those would I'm be my three jazz one. drummers that I take. Right. Sheila E. Those are my three jazz drummers. I'm going to take you we're think move on from jazz. Neil Pert's not a better percussionist slash drummer than Sheila E. I think so. What? So, no, absolutely not. Hal Blaine. Moving, Let's do Hal Blaine. Moving into so we've already done John Bonham. How can Hal Blaine not be in your list? He literally wrote the book on drumming. Literally. <laughs> There's certain things I appreciate about Keith Moon, but I'm not gonna put him in my top ten. I thought we were talking about Hal Blaine. Let's see here. Literally how do you not put the guy from the Wrecking Crew, the guy who played drums on the Beach Boys, the Birds, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Johnny Rivers, Simon and Garfunkel, Neil Diamond, John Denver, Barbara Streisand, Captain and Neil the Carpenters in the Fifth Dimension. The freaking Wrecking Crew, dude. Because as a drummer, you don't. It's the disc. It's not about the discography. It's a little about the discography, dude. See, we're, but you're not a drummer, so we're not. We're taking this from completely different angles. Hal Blaine was a great drummer. I'm not denying that. <sighs> Top five. Um, let's see here. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out for I'm gonna say something that's a little off the wall here. But a drummer that really has inspired me as a drummer from the 20th century has got to be Alex Van Halen. I, I'm sorry, but that that's just what's where I'm at. Van Halen is just a treat for me to listen to all around. I'm just going to say it. My but. God, not even the best musician in Van Halen, dude. Not <laughs> even the third best. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> just some of the tracks that got laid down, I just I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say you're gonna say he was one of the best. I'm not gonna say he's one of the best. I'm just saying that it, that was particularly influential for me as a drummer. The, the yeah. So over Hal Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Andrew, I, I this got, one's gonna be the title is gonna be like Hal Blaine worst drummer than <laughs> Alex Van. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not going to make that assumption, or I'm not going to. I'm not going to say one way or the other on that. You need to watch some videos of how Blaine played the drums. Literally wrote the book. I, you know, I know. Do you? I just, I, I do know. I just, it doesn't, it doesn't get to me. That'd be like know. not putting Pete Seeger in one of your best banjo players of all time. He literally wrote the book on how to play the five string banjo. And while as I believe you, I don't play the banjo, and so I wouldn't know, and I have no way to argue on that. I played the banjo today. So um, contemporarily, uh, favorite drummers have got to be Aaron Gillespie from Under Oath. Uh, <laughs> all right, what do you what do you have to say about Under Oath? Let's have it out. Over Hal Blaine, <laughs> over Sheila E. We're talking about the. You're the one who said like. That you we're mo- we've moved to the 21st century. Come on, 21st man. 21st century. Come on, dude. We're, we're moving on from this. Uh, we are agreeing to disagree. I have my own thoughts and feelings about what inspires me about what I think makes a drummer great. Have you heard of Matt Chamberlain? Oh, maybe you've not. You haven't, have you? Maybe he's a great drummer. Yes, noted. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, other, after Under Oath. Matt, 
Matt Greiner from August Burns Red. That's an easy one. Uh, I just met him for the first time a little bit ago. Those would be probably two of my favorite drummers from this century. And I'm not going to say they're the greatest ones. I'm just saying they're my favorites. Mm. We're just going to move on to what my favorites are. Your favorites, I okay. Think that's, a little, that's a little bit more subjective. Yes. Uh, and then... That's like saying, I think John Worcester is my favorite drummer because he's the funniest of the drummers. <laughs> Well, he's also a very prolific drummer. That guy's on the road like 200 days a year. It seems like he's in three or four touring bands. That's insane. That is insanity. Uh, you know what I was just reading about was um, Ed Sheeran. I know this is no. taking a turn. Ed <laughs> oh, <God>. Sheeran <laughs> is uh, finishing up like a nearly 900 day tour. That's a bad idea. 900 days that's insanity that's not good for humans are you sure I that mean, please oh, tell i hope that was a typo it was a bbc article where did i find that i'm gonna need you to like investigate that i i'm looking it up now that's that's, that's almost three years yeah what has he had for three years um nothing nearly as good as anything he did early in his career honestly I remember hearing about him early in his career and not really understanding it. And that feeling has persisted. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like Ed's earlier stuff, honestly. I haven't heard it. Uh, there's a, there's a newer song out with Camilla Cabello. That's just so blatantly like fake and uninspired. And it's just, it hurts to listen to. And then the product, you can hear the, with the production, they've just got his voice so overly layered. It almost doesn't sound like him anymore. Mm -hmm. So I just, it's really just like, um, and that's, um, I think that's what I like to call selling out. If there was ever a selling out, I think Ed Sheeran has found it. He's got to make his money. You know, make his money. (laughs) Just you. Ugh, a few albums ago, he was thinking about like how he's just like a guy who would play in bars and stuff. And like that was, I'm sure it, you get the impression that was coming from a real place. Oh, it was, I'm sure. But like, let, a point in time. let him make his money. <sighs> Here we go. Uh, by the end of the run, Ed Sheeran will have spent 893 days on the road. Beating U2's record of 760 days. Why would you want to hold that record? That is a long tour. That's that's not a good I That can't be like good on your body or soul. Well, sure. But I, I mean, I can't imagine he's playing every night for those 893 days. I imagine it's a little spread out. Like it just means he just didn't go home for an extended stay, but. When you're, we're talking this kind of money of corporate music. I'm sure there's, it just felt like a, a three year long vacation. I'm sure. Not for the crew. Well, no, not for the crew. But what about Ed? <sighs> sure but was. like, there's a lot of people who work on those tours, and that's a very long time. I mean, it's great to have like the continued work and stuff, but still, like, that's a long time to be doing the same thing. Right. Like, yeah, that. I mean, Ed can, you know. I'm sure he takes care of his crew, but like he can, you know, hop a private jet to like go home, see his lady, brush his teeth, whatever. Right. 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 And then like go back out and it's nothing, but I'm assuming most of the crew like doesn't have private planes and are away from their families. And, you know, you don't have 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 kids and stuff. Have you ever, have you ever been on a private plane? No, I haven't. (laughs) I had the opportunity and I did not want to get in that plane with that guy. <laughs> oh. That sounds creepy. No, it wasn't that. that. I just like, I just can't trust a human. I know who is like 21 years old at the time to like pilot an airplane. <laughs> like nothing. No, thanks. Is that the same thing as a private airplane or? No, oh, I guess it was a personal aircraft. You're probably right. There we go. There, there's more to the story. Etix had a private plane. And I knew people who went in it. I don't it's think it was that fancy. Ah, uh, they're not. They're not always fancy. 
Like, no, I'm thinking like Lear jets and stuff. Yeah, I've never been in a Lear jet. I I haven't either. I don't think I ever will. <laughs> uh, let's hear. Well, let's do this. Why don't we close out the episode with? Because we've really gone uh, farther away from it. We have. So we've discovered that Andrew is very much into grunge and rock and alternative. And it's very meaningful and, to him. So please don't tease him about it. Well, you, feel free to tease <laughs> you for it. Just don't like, make him laugh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel bad. <laughs> See, you're laughing. You're, you think it's hilarious. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, so, <sighs> yeah, so we, we've established that uh, if it hasn't already been established before. So let's do. See, if it is, please know that I'm not really mean. And please know that I contest that thought. Oh, I think. Uh, Come on. Let's do. Let's end with two truths and a lie. And here's the way that this is going to go. I, I'm pulling an novel on this one. We're going to do two truths and a lie. Emily is going to make a guess live on the air, and I'm not going to confirm or deny. Uh, you're going to have to join the Facebook group to find out. But you're going to tell me right after, yeah? Maybe. Come on, dude. Let's see here. I've always got like a running list because I've I've done some crazy stuff. Uh... Um, let's see here. So this is – you, you know how the game works? Yes. Why don't you explain how the game works? I'm going to – write down my two truths and a lie and just like brainstorm some ideas real quick. Andrew is going to try with his straightest face uh, to pull a fast one on me. He's going to make three statements and I have to determine which statement is not true because there are two true statements that he must make and a false one. So it could be something as plain as I had peanut butter and jelly for lunch today. For breakfast, I had an egg and for dinner, I had a tomahawk steak. And then I would have to guess which one was a lie. And I don't think, I think the least likely is that Andrew had a tomahawk steak for dinner. But maybe the false one was one of the more mundane ones. Let's see what he's got for us. All right, so here we go. Welcome to Two Truths and a Lie with Andrew. So option number one is that I have swam with dolphins in the wild. Option number two, I have won a banana eating contest. Option number three, I have had heart surgery. Okay. Can I ask one clarifying question? Because I'm going to call BS if that was not, if the banana eating thing happened and it was not like an actual sanctioned event. If it was like a family contest, I call BS on that in advance. So the thing is I'm going to go with dolphins because no, wait, no, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going to go with bananas because I think that you might mean a non like state fair kind of contest. So I'm going to go with bananas not state fair, but more like, um, remember, remember I've got like a background in being a youth pastor. <sighs> I, that's all I'm going to say to clarify that I have a background and having done a lot of work in the church with youth. I'm just, I'm trying to decide if like, if that is the scenario that I'm trying to decide if I think that's valid. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to go with bananas. All righty. And uh, I'm Emily. I'm Andrew. And this is Get Offset. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for understanding. Uh, Bye. Bye.